is the truth? Where do we find the truth? In the word of God. That's where we find out what truth is. This is where we find out if our theology lines up with God's truth. A few years back, and uh, <clears throat> I... I see a couple of people that uh, were at the last church that I was at, so I'm just letting them know it was a few years back from that, too, just just to uh, uh, protect uh, what was going on. But a few years back, I, I was... I was uh, having a, a devotional time, and uh, and it was a re- one of those uh, times where it was just a really good devotional time. I was I was reading through Isaiah fifty three, and and if you know about Isaiah fifty three, it, it just talks about the suffering servant, and 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 how there's this servant that's going to uh, sacrifice himself uh, f- for the good of the world, uh, and 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 we know now that that was talking about Jesus, and I was just thinking about how Jesus was willing to just give everything. Uh, for himself, uh, and and I and I start having this prayer time with God, and, and I start saying to God, I, I, I was saying, you know, God, if there if there is a task, if there is a job in the church that nobody else is willing to do, I'm willing to do it. J- just let me know what it is, and 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 I, and, I, and I'll do it. And so I'm having this prayer time with God, and while I'm having this prayer time, uh, the phone, my phone rings, uh, right? And, and and I take a peek at my phone. And, and, and it's that person, uh, you know, it's that person uh, in the church that that calls me all the time, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's the, the social, socially awkward one who who actually calls everybody and uh, and, and and is just very very lonely and talks all the time. And 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 here's what I did: I, I hit the button once, which means that it's going to stop ringing, but it's still going to be ringing. You know what I'm saying? And and then I just waited for it to keep, you know, until it stopped actually ringing. And then when it did, I put it back over and I set it down and I continued praying, annoyed that I got called during this great prayer time that I had. And I continued, I continued praying in this great uh, spiritual moment with God saying, God, if there's something that you want me to do in the church that nobody else is willing to do, just let me know. And I, and, I, and I just want to tell you the truth. It took me two weeks before I realized that God had answered that prayer before I even said amen. Sometimes the circumstances that we are looking for happen right there in the situation that we are in. But often what we're doing is is we're looking for something that is going to happen sometime after right now, sometime out there, sometime beyond the right here. You know, God, I'm going to ask you for something that you will begin to figure out right out there, right beyond where I am right here. The passage of scripture that, that I'm going to start to, to try and help us to unfold. I, what, I'm, what I want to do today is just try to give us a little piece of, of, of trying to figure out what is going on right now, right now, inside each and every one of us. What's going on in the circumstance that you are in, that I am in right now? What is God doing in your life and in my life right now? What is the Spirit doing with you and with me right now? We, we, we've been trying to figure out God's will. How can we know God's will? And, and if, you've been, if you've been with us this whole time, and even if not, I'm going to try and give you a big picture. We started off by, by looking at the fact that God's will initially is that our will would connect with God's will. God's a whole plan in all of this is that we would be in relationship with him. God's will and our will would be the same. And that, that we would begin to understand how to live out God's will 
by looking in his words, God's will and the Bible. The, God's word tells us how we can best live our lives and that his spirit begins to work inside of us, that, that it connects with the spirit in us to begin to understand what that looks like as we live it out. And that sometimes we don't fully understand how to live that out. And so we have Christian brothers and sisters. We look for those who are mature, more mature than us, more mature Christians to ask us and to help guide us when we're trying to figure out specific questions. But then now we we realize we find ourselves in circumstances and situations. What do we do? What do we do right now? Well, Lord, as we begin to look at the right now, and really, honestly, the confusion in the midst of it, would you help us to be people that choose your will that trust your word, your spirit, the wisdom of those around us, and embrace the circumstance that we are in. To live in the moment. God, I freely admit that I I don't always get what I'm supposed to be doing next or even now. But in this moment, I will trust you. And my prayer is that we all will. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. For you are our rock and our blessed redeemer. Amen. So as we start to dig into Romans 8, I just want to give you a little bit of background as we jump in. Uh, as we as we start to see in in uh, in, the, in Romans 8, we're, we're going to see that Paul talks about something. But 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 as we look at it, I just want us to remember that that we're, we're, what we're saying is is whatever our circumstances, and then we're going to finish the phrase each and every time. Whatever our circumstances, and we finish the phrase. Okay. So as we start, it's whatever our circumstances. The Holy Spirit helps us to seek God's will. Okay. The Holy Spirit helps us to seek. God's will. So, so Paul in this section uh, continues on a thought and he says, in the same way. Well, in the same way as what? Well, Paul was, was just talking about the fact that we suffer. Christians everywhere are, suffer. And so what he's saying to them and what he's saying to us is we are all going to go through times where we suffer. We're going to go through difficult times, hard times. So that's the reality of people. Whether we live for God or whether we don't live for God, we're going to go through difficult times. And in the same way, so we, we go through difficult times, but in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Well, what is he talking about when he is saying weakness? It's, it's not when we go through flabby times, although some of us go through flabby times as well, right? In weakness, what he is talking about here is, is times of confusion, times of indecision, times where we don't know what's next. What do I do now? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what is supposed to happen next. What am I supposed to do later today? Am I just supposed to wander into what's next? Or am I supposed to do something significant in my life? I am at a moment where there is weakness because there is supposed to be something significant or maybe even insignificant next, and I just don't know what to do. In the same way where the Spirit is with you when you go through very challenging, painful, difficult things, when you're in indecision, the Spirit is with you. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but, now let me stop right there. Uh, can, can I ask all of you here, and, and even those of you who are watching online, if you want to do this, if you are able to do this, I would love it if you'd be willing to just do a little exercise with me, okay? It, just, a, just a little example. If you are interested, I invite you to stand up. And at home, you can do this. I, I, I trust you to be honest. So just stand up, if you want to. Here's what I'm going to do, okay? I have two coins in my pocket. I'm going to use this one because I can read it better. Okay, so I'm just going to flip a coin, 
Heads or tails, right? If you answer it incorrectly, wherever you are, I just want you to sit down, okay? We're going to see who the winners are and the not so much winners, right? I call them losers, but these days you're not supposed to have losers, okay? So heads or tails, you say it out loud, um, and if you get it wrong, you're sitting down, okay? Oh, I hit the, I see it in the lights, I'm, I go blind, I'm flipping it over in my hand, tails never fails, heads, you're sitting down. Oh, you losers. I mean, non-winners, you'll get a participation trophy, I'm sure. At home, if you're still standing, feel free to write it in the comment section. Still standing. Heads or tails? Heads? Heads is... Oh, never mind. It is heads. Tails, sit down. All right. Whoever ends up, uh, whoever ends up standing at the end does get a prize, I guess, right? Still standing at home? Heads it is. I thought tails never fails. Oh, dropped it. It is tails. That's why I brought a backup coin, because I knew I would drop it 50-50 if I would find it, right? All right, how we doing? Did you both say heads? This could be a long, this could be a long morning. It is heads. Please each say a different thing, because it could be a long morning. Did you both say heads? Oh, thank you for splitting. Heads, it is. All right, keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh, it is tails. Keep going. His tails. Keep going. Oh, it's tails. That means I get to keep the coin. But here's the thing. Thank you all for playing. I, I'm, I'm poor, I guess. I get to keep the coin. Here's the thing. A lot of times when it comes to making decisions, this is, I think, how we actually make decisions. We get to the point where we don't know what we ought to do, or we even don't know what we ought to pray for. And so then we just kind of decide something. We just kind of head in a direction. I don't even know where we should eat this afternoon. We ask dad. Dad doesn't know. And so we just sort of do something. And, and here's the reality. Most of the time, it just seems to be okay, and it just seems to be fine. Here's what I think. This is Justin's opinion. And I think I can back this up with Scripture, right? God has a plan for us. God has an ultimate plan for us. God cares about each and every decision we make. Some people would say, does that mean that God cares what shirt you wore today? I don't really know. But I know that God loves each and everything about you. And God loves you, and God works on your behalf in every and any circumstance that's going on. And if you are trying to figure out something that's going on, the Spirit is going to help you in your weakness. That's what, that's what Paul is saying here. Your indecision, when you're trying to figure out, and you don't know what you ought to pray for, you don't know what direction to go, you don't know what you're trying to figure out, you don't even know what to pray for? It says the Spirit himself. Look what the scripture says. The Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, which is a weird phrase. What in the world are wordless groans? I think what Paul is trying to say is sometimes the Spirit talks and says things we don't even understand. We don't get it. And that's okay. Because sometimes we don't understand what God's will is. And that's okay. It's okay when we don't understand fully what God's plan is. God's going to give us everything that we need. Sometimes it may feel like a flip of the coin, but we can trust God. We can ask God's Spirit, it's Holy Spirit, you just keep praying. I don't know what's going on. And he's going to speak, and, and we're going to be confused sometimes. Verse 27, it says, And he who searches our hearts, it's talking about God. God who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit knows the Holy Spirit. Of course he does. 
God and the Spirit are one. Because the Spirit intercedes for the people in accordance with the will of God. When the Spirit is uttering things we don't understand, the words are connected to God's will. Whatever our circumstances, the Holy Spirit is helping us to seek God's will. When we are confused, the Holy Spirit is working to help us towards God's will. So who are we going to go to? The Holy Spirit. God, I don't get it. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know what I'm supposed to pray for. Would your Holy Spirit please speak on my behalf? Because I don't even know what to say. And God's Spirit will do it. And here's a key. The Spirit's going to do it whether you ask or not. But God invites us to ask. So we do it. Whatever the circumstances, the Holy Spirit helps us to seek God's will. But things get better in regards to the circumstances that we are in in, in right now. Because whatever the circumstances, God will help us to accomplish his will. All right? So not, so not just the, the Spirit is going to help us to seek God's will, but now God's will help us to accomplish his will. This, so it goes on to say, and we know that in all things, God works. And we, and we have to start paying attention to something here. We have to start work, uh, thinking and looking at the, the active verbs that are going on here, okay? So it says that, that God works for the good. Now, the word works here is an active. It's a present active verb. And so God is actively working for the good of those who love him. Do, do you know who, anybody know who Fanny Crosby is? Fanny Crosby was this young girl, you know, years back, not, not super long ago, but she, but she ended up going blind at, at the age of five, right? And, 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 but she was a young girl who, who decided to make the most of her life. And so at the age of eight, she, she started writing poems, poetry, and then she started writing hymns. And she started writing these most beautiful hymns, uh, and ended up writing over 8,000 hymns. Hymns like, safe in the arms of Jesus, pass me not, O gentle Savior, blessed assurance. And she used her difficult situation. God used that to bring something good. And people have been singing and embracing her hymns. For near a hundred years now to worship God. We know that in all things, God works actively. It is still happening where the works are actively happening to those who love him. Now, the word love here is actively, presently happening as well. So, so the, the big picture that's beginning to happen here is God is actively working to those who are actively loving God back. Do you see what's going on? So now it's, it's the Christians who are choosing to actively love as God is calling us to love. God is working and helping to accomplish his will. So the key thing that we have to begin to understand here, this isn't talking about God's love for us or, or, God, or God's compassion or God's help for us. But what it's saying is, is those who are seeking to love God and those who are seeking to live out God or live out the life that God is calling us to, God is going to help those people to live in his will. Those who are not seeking to live out the way God is calling us to, God isn't going to necessarily help them to live out his will. I know that might be a hard thing for us to, to accept and understand, but that's what this, this passage is telling us. That this is actively what's going on. God's working with those who are actively loving and who have been called according to his purpose. What's the purpose? And we are about to get into something that, that, that theologically people have been arguing over 
for hundreds of years. And, and I'm not going to be able to answer the question in the next 10 or 15 minutes that I have here. I'm just warning you of that, right? Um, of course, I have opinions on it, and we could probably talk about that at some other time. But, but I think what Paul is trying to paint is a general picture for all of us here. And, and some people will argue that this is talking about salvation and blah, 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 blah. But, but just hear the picture of what I think Paul is trying to say about God in all of what I'm about to share in regards to God's purpose in this. He says, for those who God foreknew. Now, so we're getting into what, who, those who are called according to his purpose, okay? He says, for those who God foreknew. Now, we get into something that's called the aorus tense. Now, this is this past tense, this past very active tense that God had, okay? But it's in the past. He said that, that God foreknew. So now we're talking about the omnipotence of God, that God had this understanding, this full, omnipotent, all-knowing understanding of past, present, and future, but it happened way in the past of what was going on, that God knew this. He also predestined. He put this plan into place way before time began. So way in the past, he had this active plan that he put into place. He knew it. He knew everything about it. He put the plan into place so that we could and now here's the purpose for us, for us specifically, those who are choosing to love God, that God is working to put this, his will into place. Those who are confused about what do I do next? And God is saying, I will help you by the power of my spirit. He says, I am going to conform you to the image of my son. That's the purpose of what's going on. So that my son might be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters. And the picture here is not that Jesus was born, but that he is the image of all the other. This is what we will end up looking like. The way that Jesus lived, we will start to have the picture of how we will live. It, you know, that, that we will begin to do and act and behave in the way that Jesus lived. God knew this. God planned this. So that we would look like Jesus. We would make decisions in the way that Jesus would make decisions. And those he predestined were those that he called. Those he called are those he justified. He made right in the eyes of God. And those he justified, he also glorified. He wholly made to be like Jesus. Here's the picture. God, way back when, made this plan it's complete. He knows it all. It's done in his eyes. And so now here we are in the present trying to figure out in my circumstance, what do I do next? Who are we going to trust to know what we do? Paul's pointing to the guy who figured everything out way back then and say, who are you going to trust? The one who already has a plan to conform you to the image of Christ. He figured it all out. He's got the plan. He knows what you will look like at the end. And he knows in the situation that you are in right now, how to make you a little more like Jesus in your circumstance. God will work on your behalf, whatever circumstance you're in. And God will help you to accomplish his will. That's what God wants to do. Whatever circumstance you're in, God will help you to accomplish his will. And then continuing on, whatever your circumstance, we can trust God. Whatever, whatever you're going through right now, we can trust God. Those of us who are called according to his purpose those of us who are seeking to love God. He's working in our lives. We can trust God to work for our benefit, that he's going to help us to become like Christ and do the things that he calls us to do. It's going to work for our benefits. So he says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, or actually it means since, since God is for us, not if, since he's for us, who can be against us? It's rhetorical. No one. Even if we find ourselves in difficult situations, right? Even if we find ourselves in situations where we don't know the answer, we're going to be all right. We do not have to be anxious. We do not have to worry about anything. 
But with everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we present our request to God. The peace of God will, that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. It's going to be okay. The one who did not spare his own son, verse 32 says, but gave himself up for, for us, how will he not also, along with him, Christ, graciously give us all things? God's going to take care of us. In the circumstance that you are in, those of us who are looking to live for Christ, not just take care of ourselves, God is with you, and he will take care of you. I, I threw out a question uh, on Facebook just a couple days ago. It was really, really fascinating. I was hoping that one or two people would respond, uh, and, and some really neat answers um, were presented. And if you're interested in finding out what a bunch, you know, some people said, just, just go to my, my page, my Justin Lefto page, and just see what they said. But I just want to share with you what a, what a few of the people said. Um, and it might be hard for you to read. I know it's hard for me to read, so um, I've got them up here as well. But, but I just want to read a few of them to you just to hear what some of the people said. My question was, um, when has an unexpected change uh, worked in your favor? And I'm just going to read a few of them just so you have an idea of, of what has gone on in some people's lives. Jessica D. said this. She said, my sister had a lawnmower accident. And her wanting to uh, spend her settlement on living where she could have ducks and chickens led us moving from the cities to Ogilvy. Where our sisters, where our sister and I both met our husbands, and I found short horses, which sounds weird. It's a youth ministry organization that I and some other people started in rural Minnesota. I got to meet Jessica and got to share Jesus with her. And her life was changed because somebody wanted to go live by ducks. God works on your behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. Natalie Faust, my divorce, then was set up on a date with a friend. We're now married with two beautiful, ornery little boys. And life is definitely not what I expected seven and a half years ago, but pretty dang amazing. I knew them both, and they asked me to officiate their wedding. And I would tell you that I think that God meant for them to be together. God works on our behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. Kathy Slipko Wild. It's a girl I knew in high school. The only way I kept up with her was on Facebook. She said, in four years, I lost my mom to cancer, my dad to emphysema, my dog, my husband to cancer, and then was laid off for the first time in my life from a job ten, of 10 years that was really good, but I was overstressed from. I fought to find any job other than software support. I kept fighting to control my life, to try to steer uh, it to what I thought I wanted. When I finally conceded, I asked God to lead me to what I needed to be happy, not what I wanted. I have a great new job and software support, way less stress, and the opportunity to work from home. I joined Match.com and had a wonderful man to ask me out. Luckily, he didn't follow my set guides of only 10 years older. He's 13. I'm so happy with him after these not last nine months. Grateful that I let God steer this time. God works on your behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. Alice and Patton here at church had kids number three and four eight months apart. When the youngest was three months old, my husband was very unexpectedly lost his job. I was a stay-at-home mom. It was scary, but in hindsight, God knew I needed help with the kids. Through it all, he provided for all our needs and then returned Chad to a stable work company to work for a few months later. Also, the story of the youngest kids are eight months apart is another super cool, unexpected God thing and worth you asking them about. God works on our behalf, even in seemingly unexpected circumstances. Bev, who shared our prayer and scripture today. She posted this yesterday and said, Chuck and I lived in Andover during the 91 tornado. 
He was working as a computer programmer by day and flight instructor by night. I was working at a savings and loan bank in Andover as well as going to a school and working at a pizza place across the road of my main job. We had not been married quite two years when the tornado hit. We lost everything but our vehicles and our plane. Because we didn't have cell phone then, we had to use pay phones or borrow phones to try and find a place to live. We drove to the Benton airport to use the office phone, and it was there he learned that we could live in a trailer just off the airport. We moved in with our vehicles and the clothes on our back within 24 hours of losing our house and all our stuff. Though we had lost our house and stuff, we felt very lucky because we gained a loving community that took us in and made us feel at home. A year later, we bought a house on the east side of the airport, and we became fully involved with the Benton Church. The loss of the stuff in our first house was hard, but the gain of a community for the last 29 years has been wonderful. God works on your your behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. Michelle Swift, who's here, She says, this is a very abbreviated version. But if I had a good back, I wouldn't have Abby, her daughter. Adoption has been the greatest blessing of my life. So on days when I want to give up, I remember if there hadn't been such physical pain, there never would have been the gift of my daughter. God works on your behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. Nicole Baker, she's a girl that I work out with. If my firstborn preemie was, or if my firstborn wasn't born preemie, I'm not sure I would have res- what would have restored my faith. I was hurt and mad from my dad passing away unexpectedly when he was so excited to be a grandpa. Watching my miracle 1.14 pound baby live and thrive and beat. Many, so many odds changed my heart just when I needed it. Thankful for that storm. Jeremiah 29, 11. God works on our behalf, even in seemingly random circumstances. And then Kelly Souter, some of us here know, I love what she wrote. I always think when I have unexpected change, it's God's gentle reminder to me that he is doing what he promised to prepare the way. And I wait patiently for the blessing or the surprise of the change of plans. Do you know that right here, right now, God is working on your behalf in this circumstance? It's Father's Day today. I don't know if you're ready or not for it, I would say in some respects it doesn't matter. God is working on your behalf, even in whatever the circumstance is. You might be having all kinds of struggles and trying to figure out what's next, some sort of decision in your life. God is working on your behalf. Whatever the circumstance is. I got a call yesterday morning. My dad took a turn for the worse. And then last night at 11, I got a call saying the family better come. I'm I'm leaving after church today to go say goodbye to my dad. And God will be working on my behalf, even in a seemingly difficult circumstance. I am trusting that to happen. And I don't know how to pray. And I think you understand. Right? So I'm trusting the community to support me. And I'm trusting that I will be a support for you in anything and everything that you all go through too. Lord, here we are. Each and every one of us is in a circumstance. 
And we may or may not know what to do next. But we trust your spirit to help us through. God, I am confident that you are working. Thank you for, I guess what I'm going to call, because it's the next song, that blessed assurance. And help us all, God, because sometimes we're confused. Sometimes it's painful. God, sometimes it's great. It is. But we still want to trust you. So that's where we place ourselves. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's message. We hope you found it both encouraging and helpful. If you did, please click the like button and share with your friends. If you want to hear when new messages are posted, please subscribe to the Benton Church. We also invite you to join us on site for worship. We're located in Benton, Kansas, just east of Wichita. Our Sunday services start at 1030 and our doors are open to everyone. For more information, please check out our website at thebittenchurch.org. What do you know about God? He loves us. He died for our sins. He helps us. He's powerful. And he loves you.